from the LED display installation and the thermal lens to the flexibility of this PCB board, I've received hundreds of questions about my mask. Mostly if it's for sale, which it's not. However, one of my goals is to inspire you to make things yourself. So in this tutorial, I'll share important maker tips and tricks, some that can even be applied to your own creations. For the creative and curious minds out there, I hope this helps. Welcome to Gear. We make real life superhero gadgets. So if you're a paintball player, you probably know this is the Die i3. It's a little bit more pricey than most paintball masks on the market. But the reason I chose it is because one, it has this really cool reflective smoke colored lens. And also one of the most important things for the installation purposes is that it is a thermal lens. Also a little bit more detail on cutting the wires, the length of the wires, soldering, using heat shrink tubing to make it look all nice. And I even added a little bit of hot glue because this little button switch was flopping all over the place and it was really freaking annoying. A lot of people asked how flexible this thing is. It's not a very cheap product, especially when you're gonna go in and make a DIY project out of it. And of course, the last thing I'll do is show you how to install the LED display that makes it all possible. So the first thing that most people don't realize is that this is a thermal lens, which means that it has a secondary layer that helps to protect from temperature differences. Your face is getting all sweaty and gross. You can kind of see this ridge here. It doesn't go the whole way. It just basically goes over where the eye portion is. So you want to heat that up with a hair dryer and this double sided adhesive with the foam is going to start to give way. Now you want to peel the part that's on top, not the part that's connected to the actual plastic that's on the outside. You want to heat up right along this ridge right here and that way the adhesive on the, the part closest to your face is gonna get a little bit warm and allows you to peel it back and place in the actual LED display. Now to heat this up, you're gonna want a hair dryer is tremendously helpful because it's just enough heat that you don't do any damage. Trust me, I tried it with a heat gun and it melted some of the actual face mask. So don't make the same mistake that I did. All right, so just so you can kind of see this, I know I showed it last time. So I've actually glued mine in there because this thing was getting all floppy and annoying and it kind of ruined some shots in other videos. You can see how it sits in there. I can't take it out at this point because it's kind of set in there with the glue already. Those are the contact points that are running down the mask. Now it helps to have a kit like this. You don't have to have every single tool. This is just from reading dozens and dozens of comments is how to install this actual switch that turns it on and off. See these two shiny contact points there, that's connected to the actual switch. So watch what happens if I was to actually just kind of connect these two together. Did you see how it kind of blinked there? Let's try that again. This time you know where I'm actually pointing and touching and you can see if I connect that gap and I hold it for a couple of seconds, it turns right on. So that's really all you have to do is you just basically extending this switch so that you can turn this on a little bit more conveniently with our modification. And you hold it again and it turns off. So let's try that one more time. Red is your positive, black is your negative. That's going to the battery. And you can extend this and make these wires a little bit stronger too. However, we're worried about the switch right now. You can see these two right there. So you go ahead and see if I'm touching it again, boom, it turns back on. So now that I have this thing on, a lot of people asked how flexible this thing is. It's not a very cheap product, especially when you're gonna go in and make a DIY project out of it. You can see all of the LEDs work and flexing it, still no issue. So the modifications may seem a little bit scary, but I'm gonna do it again real quick so you can see. So you're gonna wanna cut some wires and that's gonna connect onto our board really nice like.
I usually just do the very edge and then that way I can still kind of take it off in case I need to rewire. So you can kind of see there how it's connected to these two ports and still working. Go ahead and turn off. There we go. Not playing any tricks on you. It still works as we're cycling through the different presets and you just hold it and it'll go ahead and turn off. I'd say about six inches of wire. That way you can run this wherever you want. Without going and biting into the actual foam that's on the side here. As you can see, it's just gonna go along this little edge there Go down enough so that you can split this and peel back the faceplate slightly. see lift this all up remember what I said this thing is very flexible so you shouldn't have any issue and then I kind of put it so it was like right over this nose plate this nose little ridge meets and it kind of sits there So I'm just gonna heat it back up using the hairdryer and the adhesive will go right back together. No problemo. Yep, nice. It still works. I, I'm surprised. Honestly, I thought I was gonna have to buy another one of these and pretend. So I saw in the comments recently that someone's gonna use this display for their Halloween costume, which I think is an awesome idea. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. This video is what YouTube thinks you wanna watch. 
And if you haven't seen the original where I take the display out of the glasses, you wanna click that video. As always, take it easy and stay creative.